Hello everybody. So today we have brought you the most awaited surgical video. I hope you'll agree with us. The case we have been discussing for last two times, the case of Vesaikovichanal fistula. She is a 34 year old lady and recently last week we have performed a surgery for her. So the video is dedicated to uh, the diagnosis as well as the surgical management of the patient. So Dr. Dheera, would you like to just recapitulate the history? Uh, she's a 34 year old lady who came to us, who was referred to us with complaints of continuous dribble of urines for the last five years. Uh, what stood out in her history was her obstetric history was that she developed this complaint after her third vaginal delivery, which was a V bag. Her first one was a cesarean section. Second one was a vaginal birth after cesarean. And the third one was also a vaginal birth after cesarean, which was five years back. And on examination, uh, what stood out was on the per speculum examination, there was pooling of urine in the vagina. Uh, we went ahead with doing a, a CT fistulogram where the uh, positive contrast was inserted. And the vaginal, the fistula was so big that yes. from vaginal the examination, where when we were doing PV, we could put our finger in a trap. Actually, that finger was reaching the bladder wall, right? right? But touching the bladder mucosa through it, it was so big in size. Okay. Right. Yes, ma'am. It was at the 12 o'clock position, a rent of around 1.5 to 2 centimeters was felt. Hmm. And then we and did, how did we confirm it? Right. We did a CT fistulogram. We, we injected the positive contrast uh, in the bladder and there we could see the abnormal communication between the base of the bladder and the vagina. But one more important thing which we I forgot to discuss during the case discussion which I would like to emphasize here that in modern gynecology or modern urogynecology there is no role of three swap test. The very favorite three swap test of the examiners does not give us any extra advantage. Uh, so, Vrithi, a question here yes, is for you that just can you give an overview? What are the problems which can predispose to a formation of fistula? That happen because of a prolonged labor. Uh, we also have a surgical fistulae, ma'am, which can happen during major gynecological surgeries. Of course. Yes. And uh, ma'am, we also have radiation-induced fistulae. Yes. People who are undergoing treatment in the form of radiation, they are predisposed to those. So these are the three groups. Very, very important. If any yes. fistula is there, genital urinary, that has to be a preceding event. Yes. Right. Suddenly sitting at home, nobody will develop a fistula. Oh, I think then uh, without further ado, <laughs> should we start uh, our uh, surgical video? Yes. So yes, the voice over today will be Dr. Dheeras <laughs> for a change. <laughs> and you will see more and more of them in this channel. And um, so over to you, Dheera. Thank you, ma'am. First, a CT fistulogram was done. This is the CT cuts post contrast with positive contrast infusion. Here the Foley's bulb and the Foley's catheter is seen which is circulating the positive contrast in the bladder. We can see an abnormal communication from the base of the bladder communicating with the vagina. This is the fistulous tract. Before making an abdominal incision, a cystoscopy is performed where bilateral urethral catheters are placed. An additional catheter is placed here going through and through the fistulous tract from the bladder through the vagina. The inflamed tissue that is seen is the vaginal wall. The abdomen was opened with a transverse muscle cutting incision. Before cutting the muscle, the inferior epigastric arteries were clamped, cut and ligated. The rectus abdominis muscle is then cut using electrocautery. Similarly, the inferior epigastric artery on the left side was also clamped, cut and ligated.
following which the rectus abdominis muscle was cut. A self-retaining abdominal retractor is inserted and the uterus is held with the uterus holding forceps. Saline mixed with adrenaline infiltration is done to allow for dissection of the vesico-uterine space and further ahead the vesico-vaginal space. A hemostatic suture is placed at the point of bleeding. The initial approach was to separate the bladder and the vagina and then close the fistulous opening but as the bladder is being dissected dense adhesions are seen and an alternative approach similar to the O'Connor's technique is made. In this an anterior cystotomy is made. The Foley's bulb is elevated into the dome of the bladder and a cut is made directly on the Foley's catheter. Stay sutures are being applied on the bladder. With the Foley's bulb being elevated into the bladder, a longitudinal incision is made on the bladder anteriorly. The bladder is entered and stay sutures are applied to delineate the walls of the bladder. The incision on the bladder is extended cranially from the dome up to the opening of the fistulous tract. We can now clearly see the fistulous opening between the bladder and the vagina. The initial catheter placed during cystoscopy also helps us in identification of the fistulous opening. The margins of the fistula to be excised are marked by the electrocautery. Note that the fistula is supratrigonal. The margins of the fistula are dissected and cut by sharp dissection.
the bladder is further being dissected. It is very important that the anterior vaginal wall and the base of the bladder are completely separated and mobilized. The cut margins of the fistula are sent for histopathology. The vaginal opening is then sutured with delayed absorbable suture 2-0 in a vertical fashion. It is very important that the bladder and the vagina are completely mobilized so that there is minimum tension while suturing. The Foley's bulb of the urethral catheter is inflated and left in situ. The omentum is brought down as a flap and is used as a graft to be placed between the bladder and the vagina. This acts as a barrier. A stab incision is made and a suprapubic cystostomy catheter is placed. This acts as an additional channel to drain urine if the urethral catheter gets blocked by blood clots and debris or vice versa. The bladder is now being closed transversely in a single continuous layer with delayed absorbable suture 3-0. Note that the vaginal and bladder suture lines are perpendicular to one another. As far as possible, we should try to keep the suture lines perpendicular to one another so that the point of contact in the suture lines is minimal and the chance of recurrence is low. After the closure, methylene blue is injected into the bladder to look for any leaks. Any leak noted is reinforced with the suture. An intra-abdominal drain is also placed 
This drain can be removed after 2 to 3 days if the draining fluid is minimal. After confirming hemostasis, the abdomen is closed in layers. We can see that the patient has three catheters, one urethral, one suprapubic and an intra-abdominal drain.